Hey, it's Talia. I hear you every day with Talia. Here I am. Third time is a charm, we hope. So I'm here to share with you my favorite Ayurvedic skincare products and practices specifically for the face. And I want to tell you right off the bat that my, um, my recommendations are going to be slightly biased because I am vata predominant and kapha secondary, which means that my skin tends to be really quite dry, especially on my face. And I do have parts of my body that are more um, soft and, and amazing. That's the kapha part of my <laughs> constitution. But on my face, I definitely have more of uh, dry skin. So what I'm going to share with you are some of my favorite products and some of my favorite practices because there are certain practices that are really amazing for um, just getting more collagen production, opening up the lymphatic channels in your face and reducing wrinkles by doing some self-care on your face that you may not have heard of before. So if you are catching my video on YouTube, welcome. Thank you for being here. And if you want to ask questions or have your personal Ayurveda questions answered, you can join my free Facebook group, Ayurveda Every Day with Talia. And um, I invite everybody to send in their questions um, so that I can answer whatever's on your mind and on your heart in applying Ayurveda to your life. So let's get started with some Ayurvedic skincare. So I just discovered this brand new company called Shankara, um, and it is, oh my gosh, you guys, this is like so amazing, I'm trying to see the camera. So this is their Rich Repair Treatment Oil. It's basically a serum, and one thing that I learned from years of doing um, sort of product demos, I used to work for a superfood company for many years for Health Force Nutritionals. And I would go to these health food stores and um, herbal pharmacies and offer my products for free so that people could get familiar. And there would always be people from these natural skincare lines who I would chat with when, you know, traffic in the store was slow. And one of them was from um, Evan Healy. And I also really love, it's hard to understand how to show the camera the product. Evan Healy is really amazing too. So this is their whipped um, shea butter and I got the one with patchouli and vanilla in it because I love patchouli um, but the woman who first got me into serums was from that company and she taught me to always put down water before I put on the pure oil and that is because moisturizing your skin with just a toner or some kind of hydrosol or essential oil infused um, pure water uh, you know, emollient is going to drive the serum deeper into your skin than if you just put the serum on dry skin. So I love to use different toners. Like this one is from um, Wild Carrot. It's their Essential Mist Facial Toner. This is a, you know, I'm going to kind of take some of these products are not specifically Ayurvedic, but I'm going to give it my own Ayurvedic twist. And this is definitely a tridoshic toner. So anybody could use it. And, you know, one of the things I'll do is just kind of spray it on. And then I'll go back to my serum and apply the serum when my skin is wet. So it actually makes my skin look wet for about, I don't know, five minutes or so. But I'm putting it on right now, not only to show you the technique of, you know, this is infused with essential oils, this toner. Gosh, I really have a hard time showing the camera. Um, and uh, here's another one I really love by um, Pavani Ayurveda. I love this company. They are an Ayurvedic company. It's their floral water. Um, they put essential oils into a lot of their, most of their products, and they are so brilliantly formulated and beautiful. Um, but this Shankara one, I have to say, it is probably the most emollient, effective um, serum that I've ever used. It is so good, especially if you have dry skin. And they have a whole line of them. So here's another one that is for 
Pitta, that's for fine lines. And then here's another one that's an anti-aging serum that's Tridoshic. Tridoshic just means anybody could use it. But while I have this kind of oily um, moisture on my face, I want to show you a few of my favorite tools. So like to get that collagen production and to open up um, to open up the the fluidity and and uh, elasticity in your face. So one is the Consa wand, and we've been talking about this quite a bit in the group. Um, I think somebody posted something from the Ayurveda experience, but it's this wooden dowel, and it has this copper, this smooth copper um, round edge, and you can just like. See, I'm getting into my jawline here. It feels so good. Like, this is amazing for re uh, um, reducing TMJ. And then going around the chin. So this is all, this whole area of the face is endocrine. So if you get acne around your jawline, it's probably hormone related. So I just love that you can really dig in. And sometimes this will be pretty sore. And when it's sore, I really think to the channel that it's corresponding to. And, um, you know, I know that the nerve endings in the face are going to be affecting directly the channels that lead to them. So you are actually creating more endocrine health, more hormonal health by doing some kind of move lymphatic drainage, smoothing out around the face with a tool like this, like this console one. And then you can also really get your forehead. So I wanna do this when I have oil or serum or a really good moisturizer on my face because it's helping to move the tool around and it's not stretching or dragging my skin, which is something I don't wanna do when I'm working on my face, trying to basically give myself an Ayurvedic facial. I guess that's also what I could call today's video. <laughs> um, so sometimes I'll do the Kansa wand before I go to bed. Sometimes I do it in the morning. I just do it, try to do it at least three or four times a week. My goal is every day. I'm not quite there yet. But I do use a gua sha pretty often as well. So this is a, a wooden gua sha, and I've spoken about gua sha so much. If you follow me or take any of my courses, you know how much i like obsessed with this tool. Gua sha is um, a more traditional Chinese medicine tool, but it's used because it has these strong, sharp edges, not so sharp that they damage your skin or are super painful but so that they provide this like deep entrance into your tissues and that's muscle, you can get into nerve, you can really open up the muscle bed um, in your whole body, but also on your face and it also moves lymph. And it's similar, I'll do, I'll start on my jawline again, similar to what I do with the Kansa wand, but because this is, is rounded, Right? This is a much different feeling and effect than the gua sha, which is actually going a little bit deeper. So I may even bruise from my gua sha, but I don't really care. It goes away really fast. And if I've got some serious stagnancy around my jawline, then I want to make sure that I'm really getting in there with regularity. So sometimes I'll even do this, and it feels amazing. Some in this like this muscle right here, my sternocleidomastoid has in the past four or five years, like it really stands out when I speak. And when I gua sha this part of my body, I can feel like, oh wow, there's a lot of tension around the base of my jaw. So this really helps to open it. I mean, I used to, there was about a year where my neck was so sore that I, it was waking me up at night. And I'm an avid yoga student. Um, I do so much Ayurvedic body care. I had never had an injury, like kind of this mysterious injury that actually woke me up at night because I was in so much pain. And um, really just starting to use the gua sha in new and innovative ways. Um, like 
gua sha the front of my neck, not only the back of my neck, which is where the pain was, it really loosened things up. So a gua sha is an invaluable tool. I sell these on my website, taliaskitchen.com in the shop. And I want to show you a little bit more. So there's this acupuncturist on YouTube who I, I love her video. I always watch her video of how she does an acupuncture facial with a gua sha. And she really encourages like going side to side across the forehead to eliminate the lines that gather there. And I don't know if you know this, but between your eyebrows on the right side, so this is my right side, is a line that represents your liver. And on the left is a line that represents your spleen. So if you're getting wrinkles there, or it's sore up there because those are pretty big transformational organs. You can actually gua sha to help release those organs and it feels amazing. Now again, I may bruise with something like the gua sha, but it literally goes away within a day. I mean, you can even see that I got a little bit red there between my eyebrows. I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna add a little bit more lubricant to my face because I'm not done here. So now I'm putting on that shea butter. And if you do have dry skin, you know, adding, um, applying a serum, like I showed you in the beginning, a serum like the ones from, um, <laughs> the ones from Shankara. I have a, a coupon code for all of you for this company, by the way. They are amazing. I'm like so massively impressed. Um, but um, putting, uh, you know, some kind of hydrosol or toner, then the serum, and then something like whipped shea butter or cocoa butter, something that's really quite thick and that isn't going to evaporate quickly, um, definitely to sleep with that on is so powerful. And, you know, I've tried all kinds of products that promise that you're like $100 or more for a night cream that's supposed to be so amazing. And I've never gotten better results than I do with the truly just back to the earth natural products like shea butter, cocoa butter, and companies that are, you know, Honestly, that's why I choose Ayurvedic skincare companies for my skincare products because they are going as close to the earth as they can get and using supernatural, um, everything supernatural. But it doesn't, you know, it's some of them are still expensive, but certainly not a hundred dollars for uh, a jar of night cream. Um, okay, so and one more tool while I've got all this yummy lubrication on my face. Hi, Narayani. Oh, hey, Brent's here. So, hi, Brent. So, this is a fascia blaster, and I also sell these on my website. This I learned about these from Ashley Black, who is this really cool, actually, she's such a cool person. I really, I interviewed her for my life-changing power of Ayurveda Summit this year, and she's just so great. She's really about helping women. Um, I mean, definitely, she sells her products because she tells about she talks about reducing cellulite but really her products it's just another tool similar to the gua sha similar to the consa wand but it has a slightly different effect and impact it's a tool for digging into your fascia loosening it up opening it up and when you do that like um whether i mean i'm talking about the face right now but even other places on your body, like if you use something like this on your breasts and you've got kind of areas of your breast tissue that are puckered or like kind of indented, which is a sign that you have matted lymph or your lymphatic system just isn't open in that area, using a tool like this, not only does it help that area to expand again and fill out again, but it makes you overall, it makes you so much healthier because your lymphatic system is your immune system. And if it can't come to, to your rescue, it's kind of going up my nose, if it can't come to your rescue because the channels are blocked, it's not going to help you prevent disease and illness. So you really need your, your, your lymph to be open. And that's why I talk about it endlessly. I talk about lymph, I talk about digestion, and I talk about hydration because those to me are the three pillars of true health, 
and vitality that have you look and feel radiant and be at your ideal body weight and all of the things I hear so many of you are wanting, including hormone balance, which has kind of been coming up in our group lately as a big issue for a lot of people. So here again, I can go around my endocrine uh, system, like really digging in all around there. And then again, if I have neck pain, if I have facial pain, if I have TMJ pain, I can get this really moving. So I love this one. It's a little bit more, these little claws, like they really, they really get in there. Um, but I love those tools and I think they're so valuable to have even one of them um, at your disposal in your bathroom. And then, like I said, I mean, I am biased because I have dry skin, but um, a couple more products I love for those of you who also have dry skin. And one is this company, Ajara. Ah, can you see it? The light. There it is. Ajara. And this is her... Um, Rasa Sara Youth Cream. It's very, very thick. I don't know if you can see that. Where do I do it? It's very thick. Like it's, it's not liquidy at all. It's, I've got to really dig in and I even use, um, again, a hydrosol or a toner when I'm applying it to help to, um, make it more, get it more liquefied. But that's another one that could be left on all night or all day it won't evaporate quickly at all and it'll really provide this kind of seal and buffer for um, protecting your skin and nourishing and hydrating your skin all day so I know not all of you have dry skin so you're probably like get on with it what if you have oily skin so if you have oily skin in Ayurveda we are so literal so if you're oily it means you've got too much moisture, too much viscosity, too much heat, and too much kind of, it's not exactly mucus, but too much thickness underneath your sebaceous glands, and it's coming out as oil or acne. And so to do the opposite in Ayurveda, we always do the opposite. You want to apply something that is going to dry it out and that's going to provide some kind of friction to get that thickness that stagnancy that's underneath the surface of the skin to be on the move. So it literally could be something like putting um, chickpea flour, which is garbanzo bean flour, into a little bowl with some sandalwood powder or some rose petal powder, um, some brahmi powder, or um, there's all different kinds of Ayurvedic herbs we might put into um, basically a face mask. And then you put, you mix it up and you put a little bit in your hand. You can make it wet and then it's like this exfoliant to start exfoliating your face. So exfoliants are really crucial for oily skin. Scrubs are really crucial for oily skin and masks can be incredible for oily skin. So back to um, Ajara again, this is, I'm trying to see where I put it. This is their Mother India mask. And um, you can see it's just a powder. It's just a powder. So I could even take something like this that has all these amazing um, nutritive herbs. It has, um, it has Indian earth. It has some coconut extract. And if it didn't give my skin enough friction to really feel like I'm exfoliating, then I could add something like the garbanzo bean flour or even oat flour, which is if you have a combination of dry and oily skin, oats can be so helpful because they're demulcent, which means they're moistening. And if you are using them in powder form, they'll also exfoliate. And that company, Shankara, again, um, they have a, a micro crystal um, exfoliation treatment that is tridoshic. <laughs> so that's a really great one. Um, I'm loving this. And I have so many products down here, you guys. Um, and there are also certain masks that are especially good at pulling oil. So I personally love um, zeolite clay. Um, I love to use that one uh, to pull any kind of impurity out of the skin. 
Um, zeolite's really special because it um, it detoxifies the body on such a microcellular level that it can actually go systemic. So when I still had psoriasis on my skin and it was very red and itchy and painful and um, and I was scratching it every day because it was that was the only way I could get relief. Um, I would put zeolite clay like with some water. I would just put that onto the patches of skin where I had irritation. And, you know, it could be acne. It could be irritation on the face as well. And I would literally feel a detox in my entire body, even though I only applied the clay to one place on my body topically. I didn't need to take it internally as a supplement to get that detoxifying effect. I could really just put it on my skin. And there are, um, what's that other clay? I'm forgetting the name of it right now. There's another clay that works very similar to the zeolite. Ah, oh, I'm forgetting right now. I can post it in the comments when I'm finished with the live video. But, you know, you can do a really simple mask. You can add some other Ayurvedic, um, some other Ayurvedic elements to it, like rose petals. Um, rose petals, which you can grind into a powder or even use rose water, is so anti-inflammatory. It has a little bit of a bitterness to it, which is so good for combating oily anything um, and any kind of inflammation or heat. So even just adding rose water or rose petals to some of these products that you might already have um, at home. Oh my God, what is the name of that clay? I almost just thought of it and then it disappeared again. Um, but you know, you can leave a mask on for five minutes, 10 minutes, rinse it off and be like, I am so good for the day. And you don't have to buy some fancy um, special facial powder you can really be creative and have a few different bases that you mix together to make your own and then um i have a couple other honorable mentions i have to say so so far the products that i've spoken about are ajara she has been doing ayurvedic skincare products for um i think 17 or 18 years i'm bentonite bentonite clay thank you michelle that's it um, but Nicole Hinterstocker is her name who, who created the Ajara skincare line. She is amazing. And you can actually reach out to her and ask her to give you a little mini, um, skincare consultation where she'll guide you to what products she thinks you should use. So I did that with her. Um, she was also in my life changing power of Ayurveda summit earlier this year. And I had that session with her. And being that I have dry skin, she really steered me away from using anything that had coconut oil in it. So this ties into um, the conversation about if you do have oily or heavier skin, coconut oil is really light. It's really penetrating, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't add weight. It's a light oil. So when you've got oily skin, Coconut oil can be your primary moisturizer because even though it's oil, it's not going to add to a clogging of sebaceous glands. It just has has lauric acid in it. It just has a different quality than a lot of other oils that make it really, really great for the face, the body. I used to even put it in my hair. Um, but... Um, yeah, you can you can use coconut oil as one of your moisturizers as well. And you can kind of liquefy coconut oil, add some exfoliating powder, and make a mask out of that that then you rinse off 10 or 15 minutes later and your skin will just be glowing, especially if at the end of your mask treatment, you come back in with your fascia blaster. Or your gua sha and you really drive those herbs and that oil into your skin on a deeper level so i love ajara i really love evan healy i think that evan healy is amazing and they're not an ayurvedic line but they divide up their products in um like they have like an anti-aging line an anti-inflammatory line um, a sensitive skin line. I think their products are amazing and you can get those at health food stores 
all across the country, whereas Ajara, you've got to go to their website. And one thing I'm going to do at the bottom of this Facebook Live when I'm done is I'm going to post for you in the comments any coupon codes or um, links that I have to these companies so that you don't have to search for them. You can use my link to go straight to these companies and check out their, their skincare. Um, I also really love, um, I already mentioned them, but Pavani. So Pavani Ayurveda, and I have a coupon code for you um, with them. I believe it's, I believe it's nourished, but I'm going to look it up and put it in the comments below this video so you don't have to guess. Um, they, they are truly an Ayurvedic line. Um, these two young women who went to school at the um, California College of Ayurveda, their skincare line is amazing. I've been using them ever since the day I discovered them about four years ago, and I love their products. And then my new favorite is this company, um, Shankara. Let me show it to you. <laughs> you can kind of see it. Um, this one's a better way to, this one's better to see it. Shankara is the name of this company. Absolutely incredible. They make cleansers. They have everything. They have body oils and they're, they're, um, the quality is just out of this world. And then I also really love Anne Marie Gianni. She's also an Ayurvedic skincare company. Um, you've got to find her online, although she does sell some of her products, I think on, um, you know, maybe like on Thrive Market or, or Lucky Vitamin, I think. But I will show you her website as well. And then, you know, I can't talk about skincare for the face and not talk about a couple of essential oils. So um, this is my favorite blend from doTERRA. It's called Immortel. I never leave home without it. I keep one in my car, I keep one in my purse, I keep one in my toiletry bag, because this is a blend of some of the most powerful anti-aging, um, anti-inflammatory essential oils, and it's pure. It's just essential oils. It doesn't have anything else in it. So this is a blend of um, frankincense, sandalwood, lavender, myrrh, helichrysum, and rose. So truly, you know, if you were to research best essential oils for the skin, especially aging skin, these are the ones that are going to come up. You might also find rose geranium. But when I've had little spots, like a sunspot, I've had a couple spots that my doctor was like, ooh, you want to watch out for those. Um, like if you get, maybe the skin starts to be real flaky in one area and then it's red underneath, that's actually a sign that it could be a precancerous um, you know, sunspot on your body. And I have literally just applied um, Immortel to those areas and they have disappeared, fallen off, gone away. I mean, I know, you know, I'm Vacha predominant. I don't have, and I'm 46. So I don't have like, you don't look at me and are like, her skin is the most beautiful, amazing I've ever seen. But it's pretty great. It's pretty great. And I really attribute it to all of the things that I've shared with you today and Immortel. I put this on everything. And I sell this in my Talia's Kitchen shop. FYI, I give you a better deal on this than you can get if you just went to doTERRA and bought it retail. Um, so check it out on my website. And I'm seeing if there's anything else I want to show you here. Now, the Consa Wand I got this on Floricopia's website. So I'll show you their website as well. And I'll just make sure you have everything. But um, yeah, I love it. And so I don't, there's a question here from Michelle. I don't drink any clay because I am Vata predominant. I get constipated instantly. And I mean instantly. So I personally don't drink clays. But if you are Pitta predominant, you run hot oily. Or you're Kapha predominant, you run wet, heavy, slow, taking some um, internal clay can be amazing for clearing the digestive tract because clay is a binder. So it draws impurities towards itself and then it empties, it empties you out, right? It takes it out through your stool. 
Um, if you're vata predominant like me and clay is too dry and constipating, like I said, that's a great thing to use on your skin because your skin is one of your largest organs and your whole body's going to be affected more so when the clay is has like a systemic um, microcellular effect like zeolite clay. Um, but even from bentonite, you can get a result on the face or on an area where you have a rash. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. And look at who joined us today. Jana Long joined us, who's the most amazing, beautiful yoga teacher. Kimberly's here. Megan joined. Um, yeah, so you can make your own version of Immortelle without lavender, Patricia, and um, I can definitely guide you on how to do that. When you're making your own essential oil blends, and this is like a complete, this isn't only another Facebook Live topic, this is another, like this is a whole Ayurvedic aromatherapy course, um, which I am working on, but it probably won't come out in 2019. Um, you do need to know how to layer essential oils because they are volatile oils and they react to each other on a chemical level. So if you put something at the bottom of a blend, if you say put um, lavender, I know we're doing one without lavender for you, Patricia, but if you put lavender at the bottom of a blend and then you added something on top that was really kind of an in-your-face oil, like really high, we call it ketones, um, something like coriander or lemongrass um, or even rose geranium, because the lavender doesn't have as, this is my interpretation, so just bear with me. I'm not an, a certified aromatherapist, um, but, but I've studied it for 17 years. Um, because lavender is not as strong of an essential oil, like it doesn't have as much, you know, in your face as the one that you put on top. The oil that went on top of it basically digests the lavender and negates its um, therapeutic use. So if you switched it around and put the stronger, more ketone um, specific essential oil at the bottom of a blend and then put a layer on top that is still has a strong smell but that won't chemically override or digest the oil that went in underneath it that is the art of essential oil layering and that's how you can make a blend that not only really works on a therapeutic level but it will also smell the best so one thing i think is so interesting is if you and I have the same recipe for an essential oil blend, let's say it has four, three or four different essential oils in it, and neither of us are practicing a specific system for how to make that blend, and I put mine, all of those oils, we have the same exact recipe, but we put our oils into the bottle in a different order, they will literally be therapeutically, chemically, and scent-wise totally different blends. Isn't that interesting? Like that's how intense the chemistry of essential oils is. And that's why they're so, so, so very powerful. And why when I teach about them, I teach about them with caution. And I'm very specific about the ones that I teach. So Immortel doesn't have any essential oils in it that are photosensitive, which means you can put it on your face, you can go out into the sun and um, you won't get, you won't be like more susceptible to burns. Um, and you can apply it more than once a day, but you know, three or four times a day is really the max that you would need to. I usually don't use it more than two or three times a day. Most of the time I use it once and um, unless I'm really working on a specific spot, then I will use it two, three, four times on that one spot. You don't have to put it everywhere and really work on it until it shifts, until it shows you that it's healed. So that is my take on Ayurvedic skincare products and practices for today. I always have so much to share and these Facebook Lives seem like they go by so fast, um, but I hope you got some really great value from this today. And um, I can't wait to see you next time. Oh, Megan, base and then top notes when blending. Yes, I mean, those are, thank you for using the correct terms. <laughs> the an, an essential oil that needs to go at the bottom of a blend would be something that would be, I don't always call them the same things because I've learned some different notes, um, some different 
techniques when it comes to blending and layering essential oils. But um, ask me the question in our Facebook group and I will um, and I'll answer it in more detail there if I can. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, this is Talia from Ayurveda Everyday with Talia and I'll see you next week.